All right, thanks so much for listening to yet another edition of Lunch Out Loud Ottawa, number 57. My Ooh. name is Nick Machuski. <laughs> I'm Andrew Miller. And this, of course, is a podcast that talks to the people, places, events, and music that make Ottawa the incredible city that it is. And before we get to Robbie Lervier of Fall Down Gallery, nice. don't know if I got your name right. No, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we check this out? Hello, this is Sasha Foster, also known as Foster. I am a resident DJ for the Lifted, Party Pack, and Friends of Parties here in Ottawa. The music you'll hear today is all from artists we've played alongside this year, as well as music from the one and only Ryan Hemsworth, who you can catch me opening for on Friday, February 6th at Babylon Nightclub. That was You Owe Me, Nas, featuring Genuine, Sangle Edit, Remix by Foster. So make sure you get out to Babylon to check him out. Uh, open it for Ryan Hemsworth, who I just found out played for you in the basement. Yeah, totally. About a year back, him and Iggy Smalls threw a basement jam. Um, maybe like 80 to 100 people. Super fun, pretty sweaty. Um, and he's coming back, yeah, Friday night. Now Sweet. he's getting... He's, he, Hemsworth's exploding, going across Canada, getting plays in Australia, getting plays. Yeah, I guess it was just a matter of time for him, you know, like he's, he's definitely got the touch. Yeah, he's like super talented and people just needed to recognize that. And yeah, so that'll be a lot of fun. So we're here with Robbie from Fall Down Gallery, uh, the owner here, and he's a very notable artist. I think uh, a lot of people in Ottawa are getting to know you through your amazing art and your live mm -hmm. art and yeah, performance you, so many different events. For sure, throwing parties and selling paintings, that's kind of kind of what we've been up to for the last couple of years, but it's definitely becoming a trend where people can, you know, see see an image, you know, see a painting and then automatically just know who the artist is without seeing either the signature or what it is, you know, just a recognizable style. And, and, and it's good. recognizable style, but it's not only that, you have so many interesting things going on within the painting, which I think draws a lot of people to always want to see what uh, you're up to next, uh, what new ideas you're coming up with. So totally. it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I guess a lot of it is just more of like a party atmosphere, right? So lots of animals, lots of people. Um, animals like to party? Sure, they mm -hmm. do, totally. Sometimes they... Sometimes they're drinking 40s, sometimes they've got guns. <laughs> I throw a lot of girls in the mix and it's just like a very PG scenario where it's like, there, it almost seems like, you know, there's something up, but really it's everyone's happy. You do, uh, <laughs> you do a lot of uh, personal uh, paintings for different people. So they, they come, they pay you, and you do it for them. And they ask them to do different scenes. What are some of the weirdest uh, yeah, scenes that you've done or more, of, more interesting ones that made you have to think, what yeah, am I going to do now? The commission work, I've gotten some, some strange requests. Probably the weirdest one was the, um, the UN forum, which was like I had to really kind of, you know, do, do, down a bit. yeah, <laughs> talking about, you know, my normal style, I kind of had to, yeah, people were like holding birds and like it was a little bit more peaceful, peace signs and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, so that one was a bit challenging. Um, recently I did a basketball themed canvas for somebody. Basketball has been like my sport since I grew up. So for someone to come to me, say like, yo, I want to pay you to, you know, draw what I'm already into. It was too awesome. So more of those would be great. That's more basketball-themed related canvases. Where are some other spots in town that people can see uh, some other work they've done? You've, you've, you've done a couple of murals here and there over the days? Yeah, the last couple of murals that I've done, um, I did both washrooms in the El Camino uh, taco restaurant that just opened up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, on, well, on Alga, one on of the most popular yeah. restaurants in the city. I think no. it was just voted number one uh, new restaurant in the city. Dude, the fish yeah. tacos? Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's not even fair. Can't yeah. wait to see what his next restaurant's up uh, on Somerset. So it'll be oh, just yeah. down the street. Just on the corner. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else I did? The Lunetta, which is kind of um, a karaoke type, you know, punk bar. Because, you know, they, they throw a lot of shows, a lot of live music there. So, so I, they do karaoke punk? 
Oh, I don't know if it's if it's punk. Because I've thought of that since we, like we've been promoting the hip hop karaoke for a while too, and yeah, I, yeah. I'm big being from Cornwall like yourself. I'm Hell, pretty yeah. big on the punk music too, so totally. I've always thought that punk rock karaoke would go over pretty well cool. for me anyway. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this um, this Friday, Silverstein's playing in Cornwall at Boo Night Spot, yeah. and like a bunch of local bands like Ed and a couple others are opening for them. Yeah. So that's cool. I know one of my sister's friends, uh, her little brother's in one of the bands that are there. So I don't, I don't remember exactly what band it is, but. Yeah, that'll be fun. Love Cornwall. Yeah. Do you uh, still do a lot uh, coming from Cornwall? I know that you used to do a lot of events in Cornwall. Do you still go back and do a lot of events there? Yeah, we did one on Boxing Day, which was also local band related. Uh, super fun. They, you know, it's just good people getting together in one of the few venues that Cornwall happens to have. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, just. And which, just ven- which venue is that at now? Just getting back. Um, it's called Vu Night Spot VU. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's right. so it's the old snails, the old. There's a, there's a bunch of names. Changes names every once changes, in a while. Changes names, but um, it's got a really good staff right now. It's got like a bunch of friends that grew up together. They, you know, maybe even, you know, it's managing it or just working there, but it's like, it's it's got a really good vibe. That's so, cool. Yeah, it's good. A- any plans on uh, perhaps opening up shop in Cornwall ever or anywhere else besides Ottawa, I mean? Yeah, in Cornwall, it kind of scares me just because yeah. I know that it's, uh, you know, it's not a very big city mm-hmm. and, you know, trends aren't really turning over as fast as they probably should. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think, uh, you know, with the right location and, and the right product, you could probably do well anywhere. Yeah, so possibly that. So you're originally from Cornwall. What brought you to Ottawa? It's definitely one of the closer cities that everyone flocks to. Everyone just, you know, they see opportunity, they see jobs. Um, so I lived in Toronto for a while and I did a bit of traveling, um, Australia, Fiji, that kind of shit on the way back. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, but on the, on the way back to Ottawa, like from Toronto to Ottawa, <laughs> just a, a little quick detour. To, uh, tr- yeah, all the way to the other side and then came back. <laughs> quick detour. Um, nice. Yeah, no, I was actually over there for not more than a year probably, and then I came back a little early just because I was just that tourist who was like cruising around having too much fun. Where did you live in Australia? I did... Um, Melbourne and then Sydney. So yeah, I didn't I lived in Melbourne for a while. Too. Melbourne's the shit, right? It's so amazing. That's awesome. Oh, dude, there's this place called um, Section Eight, which is just in Chinatown, in like one of their back alleys. Yeah. Uh, it's just kind of. It looks like a parking lot, right? Um, but it looks like a hot dog stand, which they're serving booze out of. You know, they're like DJs, barbecues, and all their seating arrangements are crates. Oh, cool. So ten years ago, right when I'm like, okay, I'm going back to Canada, I'm gonna open a shop or start working for, you know you know, the retail, and then make my way in, it was always back to the Section 8 patio in Australia because all their seating was with, with pallets, but different different levels, and it's like, I don't know, it was very, uh, you know, natural and organic, and I kind of like, right yeah. away. And I like that in the back alleys, that they did uh, put cafes, and they did, That's they great. made it a lot more yeah. uh, closer-knit. For sure. Pretty, in that central business district as well in Melbourne. Yeah. Which I hope we're going to do here a little more. Yeah, Ottawa future. needs to, to obviously, you know, like, let people take small risks yeah. in, in businesses like that that aren't your everyday business. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So what's, uh, what are some of the things that are keeping you here in Ottawa then now? Um, I think, uh, you know, putting some time in here. It's been like maybe six to eight years since I've been back. Um, starting a small client-based uh, following, you know, you know, throwing art shows and throwing parties and selling fall-down clothing as well when it started. Uh, it's kind of like just made it, you know, Mm-hmm. Made it my my home for the next ten to twenty years at least. Really, that's great. You know, once you start, it's it's definitely hard to stop. Yeah, for any, sure. Any favorite restaurants, night spots that you have in town that we can see Robbie frequently? Frequently, <laughs> Mercury Lounge. Is, I know you are you are a new parent, so yeah, that's right. Maybe not as I choose as my much. battles now. I don't there actually I don't just rush out the door. It's very slowly, actually, <laughs> quietly. Um, so Mercury Lounge, obviously, Collection Fifty Six. Uh, it's always been a favorite. Yeah. Um, and then there's Ritual in Babylon that everyone tends to uh, attend as well um, for any upcoming shows. You know, those are the spots. What are your favorite nights for Babylon and Ritual? Um, Frenzy is always a big one. Mm-hmm. Um, is that still uh, Iggy? That's Iggy Smalls is a list, yeah. Um, what else as well? Obviously, ATCR, Tribe Called Red yeah. um, for the powwow. And then uh, Girls and Glams has been killing it for a long time, mm-hmm. right? So that's good for Babylon. No. That's still a bad one? That's still on the, okay. the first Friday of every month, yeah. Okay. Brains for Breakfast and DJ Endian. Cool. So that's awesome. What about restaurants? Restaurants. If I get out, if we get out because of the kid, you know, it's, yeah. you know, they're, 
they're normally in bed by a certain time, and it's like you're chasing them just to have a bath. And yeah. Uh, yeah. so eating out is, is very rare, you know. Like when I when I grew up, we'd, we'd do like a pizza night on Fridays, where we just order pizza. Yeah, it's like a big deal. I still do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So yeah. w- me and my lady are kind of on that tip, where you know, just stay home on a Friday night and. That, that's our going out. That's good. Where, where yeah, pizza from? In. yeah. Where do you order your pizza from? That's a good one too. Yeah. Georgie's on Elgin, holds it down. Slice and Co. just opened up in the corner of Gladstone. Yeah. Um, wicked semi gourmet pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Colonnade. We we try to mix it up. Right? Yeah, yeah. Colonnade's quite good. Eh? They don't deliver though. That's the issue. I know. You got to go gotta pick walk. that up. And when it's minus uh, fifty billion outside <laughs> like it is today, it's a little bit. Uh, you, yeah. You feel, and your pizza's frozen by the time. Yeah. You, go. yeah. <laughs> you feel like taking a cab. The heated seat. You have to heat the seat and bring it back back home in that way. For sure. All right. So, can you tell us a little bit about Fall Down Gallery than it is, like, uh, what it is, yeah. or Fall Down uh, even how it started? I mean, I know you started more with clothing. Yeah, it started there you with, go. started with making T-shirts. So um, Sharpies, just actually drawing on shirts. That's how homemade it was back then. Yeah. Um, and then eventually started to um, pay people to make my clothes, and yeah. then eventually bought the silk screen operation so I can make my own clothes. Um, how, and how long ago was that? That was ten years, probably. Ten years. Ten yeah. years in the making. Before it was like me actually doing it, so now I'm even um, vinyl cutting and, and making like pressing hats and kind of like just taking it to the next level. Yeah, you've definitely got a lot more uh, uh, kind of a variety of inventory now, right? So. Totally. I think that's with it coming or it with you making it yourself, you're actually able to see like uh, you know you want to press on bags or you want to make you know, you know like harem pants or pajama pants. You can do anything really, you know. Yeah. So as long as you get the blanks, you're able to like yeah print all night really. Um, so it started out with clothes and then picked up a, you know, a, a brush or a pencil and started drawing, started doing art and started selling art. Realizes, you know, we have a lot of talent in Ottawa, so let's, let's throw art shows, group shows. Started yeah. with like maybe eight artists ten years ago. We were doing it at Mercury Lounge back then yeah, as well. Yeah, what was, uh, The collective what, scene, The yeah. collective scene, yeah, yeah. We had, when I was doing Ridge 4, we were in there a couple of times too. Those yeah. were really fun events for Yeah, sure. setting up just, you know, locals just setting up a small booth, yeah. um, just trying to sling t-shirts or art, whatever they got. So eventually, after throwing art shows at Babylon, Ritual, Mercury Lounge, all these spots, I realized that it's, we needed like a, we needed our own space where the art can go up and stay for, you know, longer till two mm-hmm. in the morning. Because um, that was the issue, you know, people, people come in, they see the art, they maybe fall in love with a piece, you know, they drink too much, forget they're even at the club. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and then, then there goes all their money. And then, in the, <laughs> and then in the morning, yeah, they're trying to puzzle it back, like whether they whether they saw the piece or not, I don't know. <laughs> but now, so it, because we have our own space now, we can throw the events, sell sell you know the majority of the art that night, and whenever it's left over, people could still come in, you know, for a week or two afterwards and still pick it up. So that's that's kind of why the gallery came about, because uh, yeah, we needed a space to hang art. Yeah. Uh, what about the name Fall Down itself? How'd you come up with that one? Yeah, I was on the clothing tip as well, so it's kind of you know kind of skateboarding related. Yeah. Um, also, it was supposed to be like a positive uh, spin on on just your every life scenario. So like, you know, if you fall down, you get up, you try it again, you try the trick again, skateboarding related. But you try it, like you you mess something up in life, you're gonna learn from your mistakes. You're gonna, you're not gonna you know find yourself there again. It's always about like moving forward, being positive. Um, when people hear it, though, they're totally thrown off in that sense, you know? Yeah. They're not really sure what's going on there. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's got that edge to it where, you know, it's, it's different, you know? People, yeah. don't, people don't really expect it. And a, a lot of your designs, uh, they have a little bit of a, a native feel to them, uh, if you will. Where, where does that come from or stem from? Yeah, I'd say the first five years of it, it was just me falling in love with Haida art, you know? Yeah. And, Never even been to Vancouver, but just straight away, you know, I've been um, pretty obsessed as soon as I saw the style and how it worked. Um, I'm part Abenaki, so I've got stories oh, cool. and uh, I've got some, some background there that, that makes me almost drawn to it a little bit more than I need to be. Yeah. So I obsessed over it for maybe like five years. And then as I eventually figured out my own style, um, I kind of like not dropped it like I could yeah. st- I still bring it out every now and again but yeah I'm on some next step like I'm not yeah. even I'm not even thinking Vancouver Haida art anymore it's just like these characters and these animals and these parties that I'm drawing mm-hmm. um, well and I know even coming from uh, the Cornwall area there's a lot of natives around there and I know that you know a lot of your first work uh, went over really well because of that there I think for sure 100% yeah. we just got to make more triple x sizes yeah that's the one thing sizes. yeah they're a little bigger <laughs> over there <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll take a quick break with Robbie and we'll be right back We're going to listen to one more track from Foster. 
This is going to be I Want You. It's a K-Tren, a K-Trenata edition remix from Foster. Check them out. Foster. Open in for Ryan Hemsworth, uh, February at Babylon. All right, so we're back with Robbie. Thank you so much, Foster. Uh, so, can you tell us a little bit more of where you are? You're moving very soon, so yeah, big excitement. Yeah, there. Right now, we're right on Bank Street. Yeah, it looks like Bank of Somerset 288 is where we're at. Um, we've been here for three years, and we're um, just going to grab some of our stuff and move around the corner. It seems strange, but at the same time, it's it's been three years here at this location. We've thrown a lot of parties. We've yeah. had a lot of fun. You gotta keep it fresh. Gotta keep it fresh. I'm looking forward to designing and opening a new store. Um, we actually get the keys this afternoon, uh, which is the best. That's I awesome. Get... Congratulations. Thank you, man. Yeah. So it's um, 375 Somerset. So it's actually around the corner. 30 seconds. Um, like I get to keep my own park, like the same parking spot. Like oh, that's cool. nothing really changes except for that it's around the corner. It's going to be above the hair salon. Yeah, there's a hair salon there. So it's. Uh, it's still across from Hartman's, so um, there's like six really big windows on the second level, so that'll be us. You'll, you'll, you'll see it right away. We have our grand opening party on, um, it's going to be the 21st, which is a Friday night, coming up February 21st, so we, you could say I've got my work cut out for me because it's yeah. like a month away. Yeah, it's a much. month away just to just start over, really, you know, like the next chapter. Well, that's good. Then. Like so it. you'll have a lot more window space than you got now, obviously. Well, nobody even great. nobody can see, yeah. yeah. But the window itself, like working and, and being being able to produce like the windows that I've done, yeah. like it's been... Main Street's a, going to really miss those windows. It's been a dream. I know. It's so much fun. It only takes like, it takes a shift or like a six to eight hour shift to do, but yeah, I keep trying to top the last window yeah. every time I do a window. Or if I'm taking one down and I'm looking at it being like, hey, whatever I put up next, like it's got to be better than this. Or else, what am I doing, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just keeps getting better. Have you been, have, uh, has it drawn a lot of people into the store? Oh yeah, every time I switch the window, people, like, well, ten times a day, somebody walks in and says, you know, are you new and all this, even though that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of how it works. Not just that's good though. Yeah. Well, that's good for that's a lot of businesses are like that. You know, they'll be in business for ten to fifteen years before people realize that they're here. Um, and that's kind of what auto is about. You gotta, you gotta put your time in, and that's what we're gonna do. And that's kind of a golden rule, is it not, in retail to uh, kind of switch your window displays as much as you can, right? Yeah, you want to like keep every couple of weeks, anyway. Yeah, keep people on their toes. You know, um, things get old pretty fast. You know, so you want to have uh, something fresh as usual. You yeah, know, try, sure. try and keep up on it. And if you have the talent and you're artistic, then why not flaunt it? You know, that's it. If it's already just pouring and out, it makes people happy. I, I love. Uh, I, I'm reading a book right now on urban planning, and it talks a lot about you know banks and how it's boring. When if, if somebody's walking by a bank, five and they have five panels of glass, and it's the same boring crap that uh, get a GIC, get a, all that crap. Yeah. <laughs> People feel more depressed walking by that. And if you do paintings like you have, yeah, with full of color and it invites creativity, and and they can always look forward to something else. They uh, they feel a little better and it makes a little people a little bit more happy. So that that's a great thing that you had here. So hopefully we'll get the happiness a little more on hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, we'll keep the windows going. Hundred percent. Speaking about a lot of that, you you have been, you do a lot of graffiti art as well, or you have in the past possibly. But where do you, where do you have you seen that going in the city? Do you do you like that? We're are we becoming more accepting of it in the city? Do you see? I think there's because there's a mural now on the Somerset and Bank in front of that derelict building. Yeah, I think Otto has always had a pretty good scene. Um, it just, you know, people, writers, they, they get older, um, they move away, they keep going, younger writers come up, 
-hmm. And it's, it's kind of a circle, right? So it's cool for me to see the different generation that's happening now as opposed to whenever, you know, we kind of first started. So, yeah, I know it's got a great scene, and we could use a couple extra legal walls, obviously. Yeah. But, um, okay. where is there any, now? I mean, you got House of Paint that's uh, by Carlton University. House but... of Paint, and then you got Tech Wall, which is oh, just yeah, up Tech the street wall, as well. Obviously. And there's a few in Hall, but um, like I said, it's cold out. That's not a lot. Any, no, any, any, any other ideas for where they could put some? Tell you the truth, what would be wild is the building that I'm moving into next door, mm -hmm. it's got two really, really big walls. So I'm not saying make it a legal wall, but. Um, I'm going to do my best to try. You know, yeah, it talk is, to them. Talk, talk to, to the counselors. Yeah, 100%. I, I know it'll be tough going over with some of the neighbors and stuff. I For know sure. that, uh, you know, Anthony that opened up Poor Boy, he went through, yeah. you know, a heck of a problem doing yeah. the big mural that he did uh, on his on his outer wall. Yeah. And, I mean, it's art, you know. But, it's not yeah. just a throw-up no. of but writing. It, it's nice. Like, you know, look at the other cities. In the, bigger the cities, bigger cities, yeah. cities. They're it's killing everywhere. it. Yeah, yeah, it's everywhere. They're... they're and the artists are getting paid to do the work too. It's not. Yeah. It's it's not just for fun, you know. Like this is like this is happening. It's a movement yeah. for them as well as us. But so if it's not going to be a legal wall, which you know it might not be, I guarantee that they'll be the biggest mural you've ever seen on the side of that building with, within the next like six months. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. By summer, we're going to make that happen. That's, great. That's sure. awesome. What about uh, like you? Obviously, I mean, fall down is a gallery per se. Um, you do sell some clothing. What are some of the clothing items and uh, thing, other things that you sell besides people's artwork? Yeah. So we're selling art, clothes, um, skateboards, craft supplies. Yeah. Um, so we're kind of all over the map, not just, you know, specific or, you know, tailoring to one customer or trying to, you know, everything that we are kind of influenced by you yeah. know putting it all in the batch and, and letting people go through it so um yeah so skateboards we're doing um some brands out of town and we're doing consignment brands so local brands as well yeah um so coalition there's uh Skozer clothing sarah and doll do a bunch um red crown clothing and that's for you know some of the out-of-towners doing mm -hmm. hundreds converse uh, mitchell and s pretty much just trying to keep you know a lot of hats, a lot of headwear, streetwear. Yeah. Um, I personally have been buying hats for a really, really long time and selling yeah. them to other people. And uh, I think that there's definitely room for a hat shop, you know, somebody who's running the hat yeah. game here in Centertown. Exactly. Something besides some place like Lids where it's just sporting hats. Or I Clubhouse mean, or whatever it is. Yeah. Somewhere where you don't actually have to go to the market to get yourself a nice hat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our, collect, our, our collection here is pretty ridiculous already, yeah. and it's only a matter of time. Now that Mitchell and S has hopped on, we're going to, uh, yeah, we're trying, we're trying to sell hats, just not, we're trying to get people out of the mall, you know? Yeah, we're trying to keep, sure. keep them on the streets, you know, all the independent shops that are out there, like, that's, that's what we need to keep doing. We need to have people moving around and, and, and staying out of the mall. How, how was it setting up your own business in Ottawa? Did you, because you, it's a brand new undertaking, you go full on into it and then you start seeing the little problems or possibly little problems from the city that you're like, wow, I didn't know that existed. Yeah, you definitely learn pretty quick when you're trying to open a business. So yeah. what kind of advice would you have for possibly others that are trying to get people out of the mall just like yourself, possibly starting that, that hat store? Yeah, I think uh, really kind of stick to the your original, um, your original plan. Like if you're if you're you know trying to mark up anything or or mark down anything for a certain for a certain price you kind of you got to realize that Ottawa is small but you know you can go elsewhere to shop so it's it's, mm -hmm. it's all about you know the, the time that the customers are spending in your store and how they feel when they leave right so my advice would just be like you got to you got to almost make people feel welcome in the sense that you could shop anywhere right so yeah. You want to have a positive experience, and you want to go, you want the customer leaving with that with that smile, saying you know this place is all right, and they probably didn't even spend a dime. And that's what we are about. We don't we kind of want this place to be a hub where people can come, you know, meet up with their friends and keep going, or or you know rendezvous here. It's like we're trying to we're trying to have that vibe where everyone's welcome, and we're not looking for you to buy anything in any sense. You it's know? not like a mall store where no. you're just walking in. Walking in and they hit you with they it. just salesmen, yeah. what are you looking for? This is, this is not the vibe you're going No, for. exactly. I want people to like just be on break from their work, grab their lunch, and come have it here. You know, It's, uh, it's definitely community-driven. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's an election year this year. Any other kind of thing you'd want to say to like a future city councillor to make it easier for 
somebody that's starting their own business? I've got no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Zero comment. What up, Right on. What about, uh, I mean, you obviously have a lot of pieces in here right now. Uh, can you tell us a bit about some of the artists uh, that you're featuring in here right now? Yeah, uh, Are they all from Ottawa? Do you got some from other cities? Most of them are from Ottawa. Some people do straggle Montreal, Toronto, and depending on where people are living. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some Juan Carlos right now from Barcelona. Um, he used to write Dixon, Royal, Tango. Now he's, uh, you know, been in Barcelona for 10 years. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a legend. Auto yeah, legend. really good. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, some more people. We have an old Dazer piece here, which, I'm, which oh, is, wow. oh, it's legendary. I've heard that name in a while. <laughs> so I'm saying, so for that to be on the wall right now, it's, we're all blessed to be looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some Pat Buck, some As Dead, um, Random, Snake Boy, uh, Mine, Cal Caden. Looks like Josh Hotz. We got Terra 420. Um, wow, Dom Laporte, mm -hmm. Mopes. Well, I'm just looking on the wall here. Bender. Bender is doing crazy portraits really? right now. Yeah, but his portraits are really good. Bender's killing it. He's uh, had a lot featured in uh, Oz for a while, too, and whatnot. Right? For sure. There's some photos by Andrew Rashad, some art by Arpy. He's from Montreal. Um, Elixir at the back. He's from Toronto. Super talented. Elixir. Shout out to Elixir, for sure. <laughs> yeah, sweet. This is it's incredible art. Man. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And what's the typical pricing on some of these pieces? I mean, uh, different sizes, obviously, but mm -hmm. if somebody's looking to get some art, uh, they can come in and expect to spend. Yeah, 100%. You could actually go you know, a few routes because there's no hanging fee here. Okay. And we're taking a 70-30 split. Okay. So the artist gets most of the work, so we don't have to mark it up so much. Which is which is rare for a gallery. You know, we could sell more paintings for a better price, and the artist gets most of the money. Well, that's good. That's it's, how it should be. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. So you could probably you know spend you know twenty to forty on something small, and upwards of maybe a thousand. Yeah. And that's like that's not even that. And bad. That, and that's a really good price. And if that, you look that's at a art real, anywhere, really. Oh, for sure. But there's some pieces that you know that come through where it's the artists are only asking maybe two or three hundred dollars for something that took them two weeks to do. Yeah. Which makes no sense. But yeah. when it comes to obviously putting your name out there, you know, like just up and coming and, and trying to like, you know, get your art in other people's houses, you know, you got to start yeah. somewhere. And I totally understand that. I've been that guy for 10 years. Well, and a lot of people don't realize that the cost involved, not only just the time that it takes, but the cost involved in all the materials, you know, it adds up. For and sure. I mean, to do like a, a four by six canvas, I mean, it's, it's costing you you know, a pretty penny just to do that, let alone the price that you have to charge and the time that it took you, so. Totally, unless you're working on found objects outside, you know, planks of wood, cardboard, whatever you yeah. find. Um, we're a big fan of that over here. Sweet. Right so where can uh, people go uh, online or Facebook or how can, yeah. you know, besides dropping by the shop, yes. how else can people uh, pick up some of this stuff? Well, you could follow us on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook. At okay. Fall Down G. At Fall Down G, G for Gallery. We have, uh, okay. we just got a Vine account. Vine is too much fun. That's blowing <laughs> up pretty good. I don't know if you guys are doing it, but yeah. It's, I haven't yet, but uh, I've seen a bunch of Vine Something videos, about so. a video on loop. It's great. <laughs> it is. It's so good. Some of them just never get old. You can watch that seven seconds for about four minutes flat, I think. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> But for the next two weeks, we'll still be at our current location, 288 Bank Street. All right. And then as of February 21st, which is the grand opening, I'll be announcing that obviously online, um, we'll be at 375 Somerset. I'll be there for sure. Awesome. So we can expect uh, at the grand opening maybe some new pieces for some new artists perhaps, and then uh, yeah. music. Oh, there'll definitely be a DJ, um, maybe even our boy Foster. All right. There you go. Um, and I was going to do a group show for the first uh, opening party, but I also just got hit up by um, somebody... Who well, he used to go by Beeston. Um, he's out of Toronto, and we might do a solo show with this dude. He does a lot Sweet. of he does a lot of paddles and canoes. Um, oh, that's cool. It's very not. Oh, it's so good. Super talented. Yeah. And canoes are not useful in this weather right now. So <laughs> no. Make some hard. Unless they're heavily insulated. Are you uh, are you working at any shows? This are you doing any live art this weekend? No. Okay. So call him up for uh, live art. He's doing live art at the WoW Gang Party at Ritual Friday the 24th, well, tomorrow. Uh, Foster will be DJing that, so check out live art if you have no pl other plans on Friday night. That'll be uh, a lot of fun there. No. Okay. So call him up for uh, live art. Let's yeah, if anybody needs live art at their nice. events, functions, any type of get-together, um, it's, it's pretty, um, pretty hard not to when you realize what you're getting, you know. Uh, 
it's kind of like providing a service where people have not only forced conversation of, of what's happening in front of them, but people get to actually see how fast people can paint um, mm -hmm. in, in any type of scenario, right? So like an hour later, a half an hour later, like I'm almost finished. And know, I think people, people really like that, that they can see the work being done and they'll always remember that whenever they buy that piece, that yeah. they actually watched it be created. For know? sure. Really, yeah. It's all about like massive art pieces really fast at your events. You know, so hit me up for sure. I love it. I love it. Other events going on this weekend? Do you have any other events to uh, plug this weekend? What are we even looking at right now? Today's, well, today's Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know tomorrow's pizza night. At my, at my <laughs> place. <laughs> we, got, we got grind on uh, Saturday, which is... A, Grinder on Saturday, yeah. That's, yeah, that's so a good that one. should be a good one. We got uh, Frank Play from the Convo in there. Uh, who else is in there? There's a Romel Ribeiro trio and Horea band are playing at Le Petit Chicago. So great, uh, great bands there. Uh, Friday is Nature Nocturne, so I'll probably be just stepping in and seeing what's going on this this month. Mm -hmm. It should be a lot of fun. It looks like there's uh, some a lot of games going on. Three DJs again. Awesome time. Fun stuff. Autumn Scannon is playing at Mavericks. Marcus Shishao is playing at Barrymore. So you got every type of music you want playing in the city. You got art exhibits at Gray Area and School of Photo uh, Photographic Arts. So yeah, I'm going to the Museum of Civilization. There you go. They have a big uh, a big show on snow, and that's on until September. But I feel since it's this cold, I'm going to go check it out. This tell weekend. tell me when there's one on beaches and <laughs> sunshine. <because laughs> yeah. That's when I'll be going. This is too cold for me, man. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, so next week, we're thank you so much. Yeah, Bobby. thanks a lot, Robbie. It's always yeah, a pleasure. Man. Thank you for having me. Oh, I love stopping by here and shooting basketball, which I'm about to do. Yeah, here. Let's, let's do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll be in the game of 21. So uh, <laughs> next week, we got Eric Ayot, who is a home inspector. So it's a little little uh, different than this week's. Yeah. But uh, it's from, almost a From a brewery market. to a gallery to uh, home inspections. We'll hit them all. Everywhere we'll hit, go. hit everything up. And before we go, we'll just listen to one last track from Foster. He has messaged me throughout this uh, interview to tell me that we did give the wrong date. It is February 7th that he'll be uh, performing with Ryan Hemsworth at Babylon. So February 7th, hit that up. Sweet. This last track is his remix of Ryan Hemsworth's remix of Grimes' Genesis. So a remix of a remix. Exactly right. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. All right, we'll see you. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Robbie. Thanks, brother. Cool.